love that. Missed that for a year. <laughs> okay, we are um, reconvening the study session. This time we're going to be discussing deer management and uh, take a regional approach, hopefully. So I will turn it over to the city manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So uh, this evening, for those that are watching, this is a special um, study session. We don't typically um, have study sessions like this that are live streamed, but because of the large interest in this particular topic, we thought it was appropriate to do that, and council agreed to do that. So um, this evening, staff will be providing a presentation um, outlining the city's efforts to better understand the urban deer issue in our community. At the conclusion of our presentation, we will ask for city council's consensus um, on adopting a resolution pursuing a regional approach to urban deer management in Oakland County. This resolution supports the creation of a regional collaborative effort of developing a regional deer management plan by working with state, county, and other Oakland County communities, as well as identifying funding sources to implement the plan. Um, over the many years that we've been studying this, and Mr. Farmer from our um, Special Services Department will be doing a presentation, we have got our arms around the problem, I think, pretty well. And it is absolutely a regional issue. This is not a local um, um, issue that is specific to the uh, city of Farmington Hills, and that's why we're trying to develop this effort. Um, and really, the, the hope is that at the, at the end of the day, we will generate enough interest from ourselves and our neighbors and officials at the county, um, strengthen numbers, as it were, um, to really get the attention of the um, Natural Resources Commission and help us out um, with addressing this issue. So with that, I'm really happy to introduce Brian Farmer, our Deputy Director of Se uh, Special Services, to provide our presentation. Take it away, Brian. Good evening. All right, I'm going to go through this presentation. I'm going to will be a little bit interactive. So um, during different sections of it, um, I'll pause and if you have any questions as, as part of that section, that way we can sort of keep um, it sort of a, in an organized fashion. And at the end, I'm gonna share some stories. So um, for the residents here, um, you'll hear during the presentation, I'm not gonna share a lot of like the stories that I've heard, but towards the conclusion of it, I will share some of the, the highlight stories of uh, the concerns that our residents have. So with that, um, the background, it, it really began in 2015. Uh, our city manager at the time, Dave Boyer, had been getting several calls. Um, our, our nature center was getting several calls. Uh, a lot of it had to do with uh, the, the concern of there's a lot of deer in the area, a lot of deer vehicle crashes. Um, people would see them laying on the side of the road. So we started getting several calls. Even years previous to that, we, we were getting the calls. Um, then in April 2015, we decided to meet with the DNR because they may have an answer of what do we do, what's the process. Around that time, Ann Arbor, if you're familiar with that, uh, they started having a lot of concerns and issues and they took it to their council and started to address it in different ways. Um, so we met with the DNR, uh, the, the main people with the DNR, Wildlife Division, and they expressed um, that we should talk to other communities having the same type of issues. Talk to Ann Arbor, talk to Oakland County Parks, who was managing deer at the time, talk to Kensington, uh, Rochester was having some concerns. So they really directed us to talk to other communities and see what they were doing, but they really said, look at what Ann Arbor's doing, that's a good model with their community deer survey, um, how they've taken residents' concerns and logged them. So we took their model and started um, doing it the same way this way. So. My role with the Department of Special Services, obviously we do programs, manage our parks, um, but this became a role of our department and our role is to collect the data, not to make the decisions on what to do because the DNR said that's uh, more of a city council decision, but you need to collect the data first to be able to provide you the information that you need to know to see if we have a, a true concern or, or, or an issue with deer. So we did this, this is the data collection. Uh, we created a, um, Farmington Hills Residence Deer Information Log, which is basically a spreadsheet that we wrote um, calls down on and what the concerns were. Our Nature Center did it. Um, we have a sustainability coordinator. They started collecting it. Um, and I took a lot of calls. And as you can, uh, as you may know, when we get a phone call, it usually isn't a, uh, what's your concern and we hang up the phone. It's about a half hour to an hour conversation. 
We really wanted to listen, so we did. We took the time to really listen to see truly what are the concerns, and, and you'll hear some of that later. Um, the other uh, item that we did was Community Deer Management Survey in 2016. We did a lot of research and developed some resources for residents. You'll see more about that. Uh, we started uh, looking at deer vehicle crash data collection. We've got those numbers. The annual aerial deer surveys that we performed starting in 2016, we've got that to share. And then we also um, have some information that we've uh, shared with uh, in, in networking with neighboring communities. We'll share something about that. So we've logged over 200 phone calls. I, I'd say nearly, but uh, looking now, it's, it's been over 200 phone calls, um, as well as emails and even in-person meetings. So we've really taken a lot of time and really uh, heard a lot of the concerns and, and impacts that the deer have made in, this, uh, in our community. And you're gonna hear some of the concerns. This sort of sums it up. Uh, basically, the first thing is there's too many deer. Uh, why, why is that a concern? Uh, because they start to see that the deer, they, they feel they're hungry, they feel threatened, um, the deer aren't afraid. <coughs> I've, I, I'll share just a couple stories now and I was gonna wait till later to share more, but even I had a, a person call up that was getting groceries out of their car at night and the, the deer like basically was staring them down right behind them, and the guy thought, well, usually I'm carrying a sidearm, and now I feel like I should have had my sidearm. Cause the, the, so he turns around, he's looking at the deer, and it was, the way the story was told was pretty funny, but <laughs> in the end, it was scary, because the guy, the deer's like big buck looking right at him, right behind him, and starts running at him, and the, where the deer usually in the woods, it'll run, you know, they ran right to the woods, but basically the guy thought, am I gonna get attacked? I've never in my time here have been heard of a person getting a, uh, attacked by a deer, but people have felt like it, it could have happened or it's, it's been close to happening, So, but it has yet to happen. But we have had calls about um, dogs getting attacked by deer, So, and even the dog having to get surgery from the, the attack. So a lot of different stories, which I'll, I'll share a little bit more later. Uh, landscape destruction and blight. So a lot of neighborhood associations are starting to see that residents are not able to keep up with their yards. They basically have given up, and that's some of the calls that I've received, is that they put in thousands of dollars over the years, and these are long-term residents. Like, they've been here for, one was 58 years, and they're calling. So it's not like this is all of a sudden people move in and saying, you know, deer aren't part of our community and I don't want to see them. These are people that's lived here a long time that have seen the population grow and have experienced the impact of, of property destruction from the deer. Um, they, they know they can call somebody up an exterminator for, for bugs or even squirrels and raccoons, but they, they call us for the deer because they're not sure what to do. They, they, they um, will try different chemicals on the plants. Uh, they'll try to plant different things. Everybody that I've spoken to has tried everything you can think of, and even now they're putting fences up. And again, it go back, goes back to the neighborhood associations that don't want to see the fences up, and it, it doesn't make your property look nice, but... Um, they're doing everything it takes to be able to, to keep um, some kind of landscape. Uh, ticks and Lyme disease is another one. They've seen more ticks, um, and they're concerned about Lyme disease. Uh, the new one that I've received that isn't on here is uh, CWD is a, is a major issue in the state of Michigan right now. Uh, concern with hunters and uh, the Department of Natural Resources and, and what it, you know, with the prions going into the soil and never leaving. Uh, I'm starting to get calls about that, um, chronic wasting disease, which, which could be a future major concern uh, that we get more calls about. And then obviously personal and pet safety, which I mentioned the story earlier about the person feeling threatened and then also pets getting, uh, some have gotten attacked. The deer are just not as afraid as they used to be, is what I'm hearing. So we did a community deer man management survey in uh, 2016. We had 5,409 respondents. Um, from those respondents, uh, the majority of the, of the respondents said they had landscape damage. That was a big concern. And then 589 people reported dead or injured deer on their property within the last three years. So that would have been thir or 14, 15, 16, I would assume, with, when we said the last three years. So a lot of uh, deer injured and reported. We continue to get those reports as well. So the deer survey, um, here's some examples of what was on that survey. 
And to help you understand the survey, it was across the city. It was put in their uh, tax bills. So the respondents um, were across the city. When you'll see later on that the major impact areas, there was only really, there's four major areas that are really have a high population of deer. Some areas of the city, people don't see the deer. They're not having that impact. But the four major areas is really um, what you'll see later. And so when we did this survey in 2016, I would say based on the results, it's hard to really say when you have a um, homeowner that isn't experiencing the impacts, they might not have the same results as somebody that's really seen a lot of the deer that's, that's in their community or in their neighborhoods. So 1,249 uh, people said the deer population will manage itself. And again, we had 5,409 respondents. So 1,249 said that the deer will handle it themselves. Um, 861 people said the city's responsible. 758 said the county is responsible. And then 2,036 said the Michigan uh, DNR should handle it on a statewide basis. So that's part of the reason why we're coming today and why we sort of suggest that approach is it be a regional approach because uh, our residents do feel it's a, it's a statewide issue and not just a city by city. So with the resources that we developed, we created a, immediately we, we put some uh, basic information on our website, fhgov.com. Uh, we create a resident deer management section. Uh, some of the resources might be what to plant in your, in your yard. We had some uh, videos that we shared in there. Um, just basic information that uh, the DNR had uh, shared with us and we had found in other communities that across the, the country really that helped um, residents when it came to deer concerns. Um, we also uh, looked at um, different ma deer management practices. We, we, we became educated on sort of the deer population and, and how they um, react in suburban communities versus rural and the more natural areas. So in 2017, City Council enacted an ordinance prohibiting deer feeding. Uh, a lot of residents were calling about um, concerns of people baiting the deer, putting, putting a feed in their um, yards. So City Council uh, made the effort to uh, put a ban on feeding deer. We still get calls from time to time. Our zoning department uh, does uh, recognize that and, and usually goes to the, uh, the person that's feeding the deer and friendly, you know, in friendly way, they just ask them to stop feeding the deer. They're not giving out tickets, but if it be, continues to be an issue, they would. But usually, uh, people have been educated on it, and they and they stop feeding the deer. So, deer vehicle crash data. Uh, Oakland County had the most deer vehicle crashes in Michigan in 2020, and even in previous years, the the same. So, in eight, uh, there was 1,855 deer vehicle crashes that reported in Oakland County in 2020. I can say. Uh, these were reported. A lot of people hit deer and they're not reported. Um, they just assume, hey, there's not a lot of damage. I'm just going to keep driving. I'm not going to call. Uh, so there, there's several people that, that don't report deer vehicle crashes. Um, according to the Michigan Office of Highway Safety and Planning, deer vehicle insurance claims average $4,300. So doing the math, um, you'll see here, I'll, I'll share that in a second, but when you look at the uh, amount of deer vehicle crashes, this sort of shows the whole state, and Oakland County has the most. So in Farmington Hills, over seven and a half years, um, this is based on the, um, what DPW picked up, a uh, total of 605 deer um, over those seven and a half years, and you can see the increase in deer. I can only assume as you get to 2020 that it may be less traffic with COVID and less people traveling on the roads. That's why maybe those numbers declined, but you could see a steady increase um, from 2015 uh, through 2019. And then again, it dropped down in 2020. As of today or as of July 21st, there was 52 deer that were picked up by DPW. Again, some deer uh, remain not picked up. They're taken into the edge of the woods and usually we let nature take its course. Um, but these are the deer that were picked up by DPW. So if you do the math of over that seven and a half years, 605 dead deer, there's, it's about $2.6 million in uh, claims at that $4,300 average uh, with deer vehicle crashes. So in our area, um, when we did the aerial deer surveys, and you're going to see a map in a second here, uh, you can see uh, 
some of the numbers, but I can say I've personally been on these aerial deer counts, and we've had a DNR representative on each one of them, and we have a GIS person that, that um, maps it out. So the way it works is uh, we, we took this from the DNR in, in terms of uh, the recommendation how we do it. We contacted Oakland County Parks, who initially had the contract with McMahon Helicopter Services to do the aerial deer counts. Uh, in 2016, we went to Oakland County and said, hey, can you do this for us? And they, um, at that time, their budget only allowed them to do it uh, every two years. So they, that, that was the year they started doing that and their contract changed. So we determined that we needed to do it ourselves. So at that time, myself, a DNR representative, and three others uh, uh, flew in the helicopter and did the deer counts. Um, the way the deer counts are performed, it's you need to have snow. Usually five to six inches of snow is best, at least, um, to be able to spot the deer. The conditions need to be right. If the sun's out, uh, it's different than when, the, when it's just cloudy. So there's a lot of uh, percentages that you can say that we didn't see them all because of the, the different um, the elements and, and what was going on. So as you can see, uh, 2016, we had 304 deer. 425 in 2017, 602 in uh, 2018, and then it drops down in 2019. But if you look at um, 21 and 18, we had 602 deer in, 20, in, in 18 and 729 in 2021. So you could see that was in the middle of March or middle of February, and the other times we were in early March. So you see a, a lesser number. So Deer typically yard up, and it depends on the year, too. It could be a cold winter. It could be a lot of snow on the ground. Uh, deer start to lose their energy throughout the winter. And you could use, you know, we, you know, a lot of research in the UP says this when they start feeding the deer and they yard up because there's a lot more snow up there. So on these years, you look at um, the example I'm trying to get is the middle of February, the deer were more yarded up. We've seen them in a more concentrated area. And as March goes on and deer start to be able to, to spread out more and, they, and that's when they start to not yard up as much. Um, that could be a reason why we've seen a little bit less deer. It was harder to spot smaller groups of deer where in, the, in February we've seen larger groups of deer more yarded up together. So that could be a reason. Um, I'm gonna pause now. Is there any questions so far or any comments? Or Does anybody questions? Go ahead, Michael. Thank you, Thank you Mayor, appreciate that. Thank you for the presentation, appreciate that. Quite a question regarding um, uh, is the deer located in certain areas of the city? Any data in regards to where the deer is located at? Yes. Four quad quadrants in Farmington Hills, 36 square mile community. Where are they, is there is any data to support, is there a concentration of deer in certain areas or not? You're gonna love this. So Matt Malone is awesome, uh, GIS uh, coordinator amongst any, many other things he does. But he's, uh, I think he's won awards for what he does. So um, his mapping skills and all the other things that he's uh, been awarded for under our central services department. He's created these maps. So part of the process for the aerial deer counts was to do um, on an application, uh, using technology in the helicopter, we actually plot where the deer, we call them out and they're plotted. So you'll see on these maps or how that works. So this is in 2021, this is in Farmington Hills, and you can see the concentrated areas are really along that uh, 11 mile, between 10 and 11 miles, a big area, and then um, near Inkster and, and between 10 and nine mile. It's always been, since 2016, the highest population of deer is really in that Farmington 11 mile, 10 mile area, and then Orchard Lake, between Orchard Lake and Middle Belt, um, around the 10 mile area, and then the southern area, um, south of 10 Mile in the Inkster area, over the last five years, that's really been the main core areas. Just this year, we've seen way more deer spread out. And actually, a lot of them started to go a little bit more south. And, and just so happens that I got a call from Livonia, uh, their Parks and Rec director, saying, what are you doing about the deer? So it's funny to see this on the map, that they're actually starting to go that way. And you'll see in another slide, that they're traveling through the wooded uh, areas and the river corridors. That's really the main way that the deer are sort of, you'll see that population, they, they um, bed in those areas and the more, uh, you usually don't see them in, in the fields or in the swamps when we're doing the aerial deer counts, you're seeing them in the woods and, and bedded up on hillsides, typically in the winter time. 
Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Yeah, I, it I gets at, better. I, yeah, I live at, on a 14 mile road area near Drake area, and I can see the fact the data there is quite quite um, minimal in regards to deer okay. issue. I, uh, by my house, we've got tons. Okay, mm -hmm. but the other question is crashes. It was about 1,855 crashes in Michigan, or Oakland County. It's Oakland County. How many? Just in Oakland County. Hills? In Michigan, uh, Hill. Joe, you remember oh, Farmington Hills? There was 105 crashes in Farmington Hills. Crashes? Uh, 105 in 2019 deer vehicle crashes that were reported. And then in 2020, 98 deer vehicle crashes, meaning that somebody called up and, and contacted us to say, hey, I was in, or they contacted the police to say, I was in a deer vehicle. Uh, I had a hit a deer. They call somebody, and then DPW comes out and gets the deer. And, and disposes of it. And one <coughs> last question. Had the city sought DNR analysis on our data in regards to their opinion about the deer problem in Farmington Hills? So that's the interesting part. Uh, they they will not tell any city that we have a that they have a problem. Okay. They will say that we have a lot of deer impacts. And that's why I think we need to take it to the next level because uh, there's a lot of residents that are concerned uh, and we're not being told we have a problem. But you'll see later in the presentation that the DNR does say that 20, or in the resolution that we propose, that they say a healthy population is uh, 20 or less deer per square mile. Um, does that say in a city or in a uh, wooded area? They didn't say, but it's 20 or less deer per square mile is a healthy population, uh, what you want to have. And so again, you can see in these deer counts in a second here, I'll show you. Um, let me, let me talk about this and I'll show you some of those numbers Thank and how it breaks down. That. So we met with, um, uh, we had another meeting in 2017. So our first meeting with the DNR was in 2015. We met again in 2017 with Novi, Southfield, uh, a, a few other community representatives that we said, okay, just like you said, does the deer told us and give us analysis, we wanted them to tell us we have a problem, we need to do something about it. They wouldn't tell us we had a problem. So we asked them to write a letter to say, okay, can you let it write a re letter recommendation to say, we recommend you do this, and they didn't write a letter recommendation. Um, they're very supportive, though, don't get me wrong. They're willing to do whatever uh, it takes, and they'll support us in whatever decisions we make. They just don't want to make the decisions for us. The state doesn't want to tell each municipality what to do. Um, for example, we have an ordinance against hunting. The DNR didn't create that ordinance. Cities do. So um, the DNR would support hunting if the city allowed it, um, but the city has an ordinance against it. So that's an example. Um, so we did meet with, with several cities and we continue to talk with them. We've talked with uh, representatives from Novi. We continue to talk to them, Southfield, uh, Livonia, West Spoonfield, and others. So what we did in uh, 2018, Southfield said, okay, we want to do what you're doing. So they want to do aerial deer counts. They wanted to log their calls from residents. They wanted to uh, deer, do a community deer survey. So they did the same exact thing that we uh, modeled after Ann Arbor. So now we thought that's a good way to go. Let's get all the cities sort of doing the same kind of data collection so we can continue to uh, work together in that way. So we've done aerial deer counts with them. So here's uh, Southfield's aerial deer count in 2021. They beat us with 869. But uh, if, you can, if you look at the yellow border, that is the city border between Farmington Hills and Inks, or in Southfield. It's around the Inkster line. The deer do not know boundaries, so they're gonna cross back and forth on that road. And we, and we do see that actually in action when we're in the helicopter. You can see some, uh, uh, it, we've actually seen deer crossing, so it's, it happens. Um, you can see the concentrated areas is really that uh, 10 mile, um, 11 mile area. And then you also have the area um, in their northwest section uh, which we didn't see a lot of deer um, in our count on the Farmington Hills side, but again, those deer cross back and forth. Um, but other years, we've seen more deer on our side in, in that area. So if you combine them, Farmington Hills and Southfield this year, that's 1,598 deer that we saw. We didn't see all the deer. Um, year after year, we don't see all the deer. There's, again, there's that percentage of what you didn't count. We don't factor that in there and, and take a guess. We actually, these are truly what we counted um, from the helicopter. We, we didn't add in deer. So now you put the two communities together. Um, you can see the wooded areas, uh, 
highlighted in green, and then the blue area is more of that river corridor um, down in the, the southern area where the, the Inkster area between 10 and 11 mile. So you can see sort of how the deer might travel through those wooded areas and, and what tends to happen. You can also see, see in the Heritage Park area, which is north of that blue area, which is Farmington, uh, you can see the, um, the Heritage Park and Woodland area has a high population of deer. You can also see when you're in those areas, sort of going back to some of the deer, uh, the, the concerns by residents, that the deer are coming to their neighborhoods and eating their hostesses and the, and the plants that they plant. If you were to go into our park um, today, you would see a lot of the uh, native species don't exist as much or they're not as prevalent as they used to be. There's a browse line where the deer have <coughs> eaten a lot of the, the vegetation because they've eaten all they can eat. So then they travel to the neighborhoods and, and they find food to eat. So they still bed in those areas. Um, uh, they also bed in the neighborhoods, but that's, that's another example. So how many deer per square mile? So back to your question, Councilman Bridges. This breaks it down. So you can see some of the larger areas. Uh, there's as many as 80 um, as of the 2021 survey in the Heritage Park area where it's uh, south of 11 mile, north of, of uh, 10 and, and west of Farmington. It's a high population. Again, they don't just stay in that area, they travel and they go neighborhood to neighborhood. So you can, if you know the OCC area and um, some of the homes have a lot of woods around that area, there's a lot of deer that travel across Farmington Road into that direction. Um, and then you look at more of the east side towards Inkster and uh, north of nine miles, south of 10, you, there's 77 deer. And then you add that up to the 77 on the other square mile, which is in Southfield. And that's quite a few deer in that uh, two square miles. Thank you. So I will um, go over this and then uh, we can ask questions again. And then we're gonna um, go to a next uh, action plan and talk about that. So you can see throughout this presentation, you can see the deer populations growing. Highest population is found in the wooded areas and river corridors. And we know that it's not just a local concern, it's a regional concern. Talking to our uh, fellow neighbors on all directions, uh, they're also having the same concern. So uh, if, we ha if we resolve this uh, issue with uh, management practice, it, it may not resolve it because it's, the deer are gonna continue to cross over those borders. So we do need to work with our neighboring communities to be able to do that. Uh, we will continue to collect the data that we've, we've collected. Um, we'll continue to do aerial deer counts. We'll continue to take calls from residents, uh, meet with residents, uh, collect the emails. Um, and again, what's the next steps in terms of plan of action? Before we get to that, I wanna just uh, share a few more stories um, because we do have residents here. And I know uh, for study session, uh, residents typically don't come up to the mic, but in a city council meeting, they would be invited to do so. So some of the calls that I received, um, I just wanna share some of those, because uh, I get several of the same type of calls that, are, um, that I'm gonna refer to here. So a lot of residents are just trying to keep their yards looking nice, and, but they cannot find anything the deer won't eat. I've uh, spoke to a lot of people, and, and you can probably tell me, and, and people in the audience can also say, uh, that you can tell them, hey, plant this, that'll work, doesn't work. Over, over a couple years, that, that plant starts, uh, it, it doesn't work, the deer will eat it. And I've gotten photos of uh, deer getting sick over plants that they, they don't eat, and, but they just wanna eat because they're hungry. So I've got photos, uh, images of a lot of different um, things that people have sent me, but that was a unique one that uh, the deer just won't stop eating. Whatever's there, they're gonna eat it. So thousands of dollars in deer damage. Um, one sort of uh, sad story, uh, people saved up for years, um, uh, and several years of being married, they decided to invest in it, going on a, a uh, trip together. They decided to put a lot of money on their landscape, and within a year, it was all destroyed by the deer. So it was sort of sickening to them that they, you know, all their, all their lives of being married, they thought, hey, we're gonna do this together, and. Um, it, it was destroyed in a year, so they were, they were heartbroken by it. Um, a lot of people have given up on landscaping and, and gardening, and I think people can attest to that in the audience and, that, uh, and neighborhood associations. They just, they, they can't plan anymore, and people have even said, we're, we're thinking about moving, we're just tired of it, 
and nothing's being done. Um, so what are you going to do? And, and that's been a, a, a big thing too. And we, we can't do anything about it. You can't just call in the exterminator. Uh, uh, you can't call the DNR. And, and so it is a, a bigger discussion, which, which we're starting today. So I appreciate that. And the residents do as well. Um, 15 to 20 deer in a yard is not uncommon. Uh, I've got many calls uh, of people counting that many deer at one time in their yard. Uh, again, they're saying deer is a nuisance. Uh, it came to, they used to love seeing the deer, and, uh, and my, my own father lives in Farmington Hills, loves seeing the deer. Just recently, he's saying there's a lot of deer. And I would never have thought I would have heard him say that, but just like a lot of residents I talk to, they love seeing the deer, but it's gotten to a point where we just got to sort of have less deer is what they're saying. Um, they're find, starting to find ticks. One, another story, a lot of deer droppings. So uh, one particular person said, you know, my grandkids come over, but I'm afraid they can't really play in the yard because there's so many deer droppings. I don't know if it's safe. So they actually stopped letting their kids, their grandkids go in their backyard, which is sort of sad that, that uh, of, of that concern. Um, a lot of injured deer calls. Again, I mentioned that. And several people reported that they were actually in deer vehicle accidents. Um, and a lot of calls about asking, can you hunt? The answer is you can't hunt. Um, I don't, it, it was, it was allowed in the past, but obviously we know that, uh, with, um, our population, uh, firearms wouldn't be, a, a solution more than likely to uh, use in our community. So the action plan. I'm going to invite Joe Valentine. Before I do, I do want to say this city management, um, our city manager and our assistant city manager has been very supportive um, the last couple months on this, and I appreciate council uh, taking this item up. We knew it was going to be a large item to address, and it was going to be a, a, a long-term item to be able to accomplish. Um, but it's been great working with uh, Joe Valentine as he, uh, him and I sort of put this together. So I'm going to invite him to come up and talk about the action plan that we're proposing. Thank you, Brian, for the background. And good evening, Mayor Barnett and members of council. Um, the question, I think the fundamental question from right now is where do we go from here? And that's kind of the next step in this presentation that we want to talk to you about. Fundamentally, this is a regional issue, and we've heard that from the onset. And as the studies have uh, occurred with the surveys and the work uh, with the aerial studies and all the work that Brian and his team have done to get us to this point, have really identified this as a regional issue. It's not just a Farmington Hills issue. I'm sure you've heard about issues in other communities that have also struggled with this challenge here in Oakland County and really haven't successfully resolved those issues. So with that as a backdrop, we look at why this is somewhat unique uh, to our area. And there's a couple of factors that we have to consider when we do that. Uh, first of all, the concentration of homes and the density of homes that we have in our communities are different uh, from other areas of the state that have similar sized deer populations. So we have more interaction. The miles of roads, streets, and freeways that we have in our area is high compared to the deer population that we have in our area, which is different than you see in other areas of the state with similar sized deer populations. Additionally, uh, we have shared travel corridors that provide limited coverage uh, for the deer in our areas. So they do have to traverse uh, other areas. We don't have the acreage that you see in, in like northern Michigan, for example. Uh, so they're on the move and they do traverse between our communities. And lastly, as noted, the deer population itself is higher in this area than what typically, and I know the DNR doesn't want to acknowledge this, but they're giving us numbers of what, you know, typically you'd want to see for a healthy deer population in an acreage and we are four times exceeding that. So there is an issue here that needs to be addressed and it can't be addressed locally. So we're envisioning this regional approach. So in order to do that, we are proposing that we build a coalition of communities within Oakland County. And obviously when you mention Oakland County, you would not think that um, if you mentioned where you were from and, and they said, tell me something about Oakland County, they wouldn't say, well, you have the highest car deer crash uh, stats in the state of Michigan. It's not something that you would think of, but that's the truth. So there's a uniqueness to this issue that we have to address, and the way to do that is a, collaboration, a collaborative approach with our neighboring communities and the county. And by developing this coalition, we want to work with the Natural Resource Commission to identify a regional deer management plan 
for Oakland County. Now I mention that because the state Michigan Deer Management Plan for the Michigan Deer Management Plan for the state um, does provide in the plan that the plan does need to be routinely adjusted and updated as local conditions and other factors change. With our deer populations being as high as they are in this county, that is a local condition that needs a regional approach and needs a regional deer management plan to address it. So we are proposing by resolution the creation of a committee working with the county and the Michigan DNR <coughs> to, to work essentially with the Natural Resources Commission of the state to develop that regional uh, deer management plan for our county. To not only provide solutions that are applicable to our communities given the uniqueness that we have, but also identify funding sources that can be implemented um, to help solve these, these, uh, these issues that we're facing with these high populations. So in your packet, there is a draft resolution that staff has prepared um, that we're asking for your consideration on at a later date. Um, but we do want to get some feedback on that resolution uh, to see if you feel that this is adequate in moving forward in addressing uh, the concerns with the urban deer population. And with that, we'd be happy to answer any questions. Anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Um, have we started the discussions with the surrounding communities, the county and DNR, uh, we have around the, the regional approach? We have with a few of those communities. I don't know if Mr. Mekshian wants to address this further. Um, um, yes, um, um, Madam Mayor, um, I had sent out an email to roughly a dozen um, other communities and folks at the county level um, informing them of, of how we were moving forward and that, that our council was going to be considering a draft resolution to help um, solidify and address this issue. And so I've gotten some positive feedback from um, some of our neighbors, um, some not so much, but they are aware of our effort and th they, th they thanked us for bringing that forward. Yep. Thanks. Yep. Uh, Dale? Well, I, I certainly support a cooperative effort working with neighboring cities, those that you know, want to support the resolution. Uh, that's all well and good, but so my concern is that people will sign on to the resolution, I mean the other cities, it will go to the DNR, or Eagle now is, is actually DNR is part of Eagle. Uh, so it will go there, go to our state rep, state senator, Oakland County executive and so forth. And they're basically gonna come back and say, well, if you think you have a problem, just like Ann Arbor, you can do something about it. There are probably a couple different options out there to, res to deal with it, but they're gonna say, we're not funding it, it's a local government responsibility to fund it. And so I certainly think we should try, I'm not opposed to it, but it may not be the final step. And so I think we still need to move forward with having public meetings where we bring in knowledgeable speakers, I call them Dear Education 101 and 102, where um, first we educate people about just the, the life cycle of deer, for example, how far do they travel? I mean, they may travel from Middle Belt across Inkster, but are they traveling from west of Haggerty all the way into Southfield? Again, I can't answer that question, but a wildlife expert could tell us how much they're traveling because we may hear the response, well, we, we shouldn't do anything if no other community is doing it because they're just going to keep traveling back and forth and it won't fix the problem. But I don't know that. If they say, well, the deer are only going to travel a couple miles, that's not that far. That's, you know, from Middle Belt past Inkster or so forth. So I, I think we need to get a lot of questions answered first, and we also have to learn about different wildlife management techniques. Um, you know, I'll, I'll bring up the word. I, I know people don't want to hear the word, but I, for one, want to learn more about a call. 
I'm not saying that that's what we have to do, but I'm saying we need to at least learn about it. Or what other options are there? Again, a resolution is great, but we have to also take it to the next step, and we can't wait a year saying to our residents, well, we passed a resolution, and the resolution went to the state, and the DNR hasn't responded, or Oakland County Executive hasn't responded, or whoever may be. We need to continue to move forward, educate the public, educate the council on the deer's habits, and what are options for dealing with it. Because I agree, they're, I, I mean, I believe they're beautiful animals. And, you know, I can remember years ago, you'd see one in your yard now and then, or a few, and it, it was a great treat. But now the stories of seeing 14 in a yard, it's not uncommon. The deers are having triplets. It's not uncommon. And um, from what I understand is that means they're a very healthy population because there's lots of food for them to eat when they're having triplets, which means they continue to increase in numbers. And at some point, as mentioned, it's not good for the undergrowth. It's, it's not just about vegetable gardens and the story about a lady who can't grow vegetables. So she moved her tomato plants onto her deck and the deer are so brazen they come onto her deck and eat her tomatoes now on her deck. So it's not just about that, but the trillium. We used to have tons of trillium in this community. I used to have a lot at my house. Hardly see it at all anymore. Um, they're, they're eating the arborvitaes. Um, you know, you can see where the deer are because we you can see the line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they eat the plants you don't want them to eat. Yeah. But um, the point is, is they are destroying the natural wildlife. It's not just flowers and vegetables. And um, so it is a concern. If you're going to have deer, though, you don't want an unhealthy population because eventually they will die of disease and spread disease. And I, don't, I certainly don't think we want to um, have chronic wasting disease either. That's kind of a horrible way, a horrible death for deer. So um, my point is, is we need to continue with the next step as well and not wait another year and continue to just say, well, we're still waiting on the state. Oh, absolutely, and I'll, I think Mr. Farmer has some additional points on that, and I appreciate you raising that question. I think the fundamental challenge we have is there's one playbook for the state with limited plays. What we're suggesting is that we develop a new playbook for Oakland County that gives us some additional plays to better manage this herd that we're challenged with, because if we continue to work off of the state's deer management plan, we're very limited in what we can do and the options are very limited. We think that the uniqueness of the environment that we have here and the size of the deer population warrants new plays in that playbook that we can use to better address the concerns of the community. Um, but to your point, you can't wait forever to get that done. And I know Mr. Farmer has some uh, comments he'd like to share on that as well. So the ecosystem, which I didn't even address that, but there's definitely impacts on the whole ecosystem when it comes to the, the browse line in our parks and in our natural areas. So we won't even get into that, but that's a great point of uh, educating uh, people on, on the impacts and the, and the deer and how they travel. But when it, when it comes to, I think the underlying issue which you brought up is what do you do? And it is, do you manage the population or do you just leave it be? And what it comes down to and then um, what we're suggesting is really what's the process to making that decision. We, we've got a lot of, uh, there's a lot of great benefit if you did um, do a deer call. We've got uh, local cares in our community that is actually, they serve venison um, to people in need and they get, uh, through Sportsman's for Hunger program, they get a lot, pounds and pounds of venison and every year they run out of it. So it's a great natural resource um, for feeding people. So there's things in place, but again, it comes down to a plan and then do we manage them <coughs> or not um, so that's we suggest if we manage them in Farmington Hills it's not going to matter so much if Southfield doesn't do it and other communities so it, it might be a little bit more difficult and that's why I wanted to go a direction Ken you had another question I did and <clears throat> actually could we go back a slide to the one with the D that one oh, this one that one right there and the reason I asked my previous question is that the South Oakland mayor's dinners um, a couple of years ago, about the time we started our survey, we had a meeting 
and the topic was deer. And I will say that the entire group was in concert that there is there are issues, but as Val mentioned, you know sometimes it's hard to get all those people coordinated. And one of the other, and Brian, I appreciate you bringing up the results from the survey, but one of the things that was, I, I didn't think was, it was kind of not in this data, was that a vast majority of people, while saying that something should be done with the deer, they didn't want them to be killed because they, they were in opposition to that. And when I read, the, when I read through this uh, action plan, management plan, one of the things that caught my eye here was management methods routinely adjusted and updated as local conditions, technology, regulations, and other aspects. But it's the word technology. Because there are, new, there are technologies, but I remember in these other previous conversations, the state only limits you to essentially one technology. But there are newer technologies out there. Does, is this saying that there's a change in that and we can look at those other technologies? Currently, the, uh, the DNR only has tested other things. <coughs> um, for example, I think you might refer to sterilization and, and other techniques. Uh, they currently do not allow, um, but they have allowed Ann Arbor to test that with an uh, uh, outside firm. Um, but regularly, uh, it's not, it's only on, I don't know if it's the director that allowed that temporarily to test, but it's not in their, um, they're not allowed to continue to do those practices across the state. So this management plan enacted by the Eagle or whatever they are today actually is a little misleading because if there are newer technologies out there and there are a couple that are have been shown to be really effective, um, one of which is actually injecting them with a, uh, it's a porcine derivative that inhibits, and you have to get into the biology of the reproduction capacity of the deer, but basically it makes the egg impermeable to any spermatozoa, so you eliminate the ability for that deer to reproduce but you haven't, you haven't killed them and it lasts for a couple of years when they do that. So those types of technologies, which wouldn't sacrifice the deer, what I'm hearing is that they, wouldn't, they don't even consider that you can do those types of things. At this time, it's not a regular practice. Okay. See, I think that that would be a little bit more palatable to a lot of folks, but especially if you tag them at the same time. And then you can get a better idea of the number of deer mm -hmm. and, and who you've uh, injected and who you haven't. Yeah, and that, that's actually important because it does require a couple of years down the road, you have to redo that, but it's a, it doesn't change their normal spontaneous um, reproductive cycling, it just inhibits the ability to conceive. And if we start talking about different things, and if our only option is a call to get rid of, you know, to reduce that number and actually to start to get rid of some of these uh, nuisance issues and starting to deal with it, that's a hard thing. And a lot of people, I know that I'm, I, I like that. It, in, well, yeah, I do like you, but I was referring to, I like your story. <laughs> um, I, it, similar to Val, like to look at them, but when we came, when I arrived at home from our last meeting, I literally walked into the house, walked past the front window, and there was a deer standing in our, right at the front window, having just emptied the bird feeder that my wife puts out there, and was staring at me like, okay, hey, it's empty. What are you going to do here? <laughs> <laughs> and, and he just stood there, or she actually, just stood there and was like, dude. Dude. I, was, I couldn't hardly yeah. get it to leave. But the thing happened to me is I was responding to Roger's email oh about God. how many deer we have. <laughs> and all of a sudden there's this it's group an of deer question. in my front yard. Yeah. 
making my dog very unhappy. Oh my God. <laughs> so I would, I mean, I would invite you to, um, there's some research in Ann Arbor that has been done in sterilization and, and the technique they use, uh, pretty graphic, I won't describe it, but. Um, it was not good. Disturbing. So, uh, and again, that, that created a lot of issues in Ann Arbor. So I think we've learned a lot of what not to do as well, as they an used example. A, they used a, essentially a surgical procedure to do that. Yeah. And that's definitely, no recovery. with no recovery, no other thing. That's a difficulty. I'm talking about some new technologies that have been evolving. And that's why that word caught my eye, is that if there are new technologies, we also need to look at those, but if they won't let us use them, then that becomes an issue. And I think that's part of the conversation is that we want to have um, with them. And, and again, Ann Arbor, they made a great effort trying different things and, and they've gotten some authority to do some things. So again, it's, it's great that they've done that because we've learned a lot from that. Um, they, you know, they stuck their neck out there, and, but again, they, they made an effort, which is great. So the DNR has been very supportive in this. It's just we need a, a conversation and a plan that works together with, with other communities to be able to, we feel, um, to accomplish a larger regional uh, goal of managing the deer. Okay, I'm gonna um, kind of try to get this moving a little quicker because we have to end in a few minutes to go to our normal meeting. I know Mike has a question. I don't know if anybody else does. And I know Joe Derrick's here and I would like to hear from him for a few minutes, but to just quickly recap, looks like we're talking about first passing a resolution to at least get some of our neighbors to sign on that this is a problem. And um, then we need to create a quick timeline and I'd like to have that um, along with the resolution. I don't know how you all feel mm -hmm. for the next council meeting in August mm -hmm. so that we can at least get the ball rolling and have another discussion about where we wanna go beyond that because I think this might be a SEMCOG issue um, because we are dealing with um, fugitive assets that move all over. Um, and uh, I don't want to give our residents false hope that we're going to hit do something this year, but we're going to see how fast we can move to get at least some of these issues addressed so that we don't keep doing this for the next 10 years. Mike, you had a question, and yep. then I want to hear from Joe. You, did you want to say something, Joe, or am I just putting words in your mouth? No, I figure. I figure. Okay, let Mike ask his question first, and then... Quick, pop up over there. I, I have just a, not a really a question, just a comment. And as a request to the city manager, um, and if you could seek the DNR involvement, come to council if you could, give us a, a study session on this issue. Uh, council member um, Noel mentioned about educating council members and the public. That's part of my education. I would be, um, if uh, we can get the DNR to come in, give us some their analysis regarding um, measures that we can do as a city and also put into perspective the issue regarding deer population growth in our community and for us to have a uh, I can make a more informed opinion about and judgment about things but um, uh, I feel that we get a lot of good information some of it's anecdotal and um, but I like to see the DNR which is the state environmental expert whoever they, they come in give us some expert opinion regarding this issue and the numbers regarding 850, 1855 crashes, I'd like to see the data in regards to how much of that percentage of that is in Northern Oakland County. I haven't seen data on that. So if you could, my question is to get DNR to come in and help council to understand the issue more important at a study session. And you'd like those crash numbers by community. Correct, right. and I, I do support the resolution that we're, we're offering tonight. I do. No, it's not on the agenda okay, tonight. Okay, but I do support the idea of that action plan we take to play. Thank you, appreciate it. Okay, um, our retired naturalist, Joe. Um, About to get educated right here. <laughs> I, I, I know. Madam Mayor, members of council, um, uh, council member Noel, I really appreciate your questions that you had as to what you wanted to do as far as education goes. Um, I've been uh, studying deer at our, on our two acres for almost 15 years now. Um, I do a lot, an awful lot of nature photography I walk around with deer. Um, some people laugh at this, but I talk to deer only because it may slow them down so I can get really nice photos. You can't talk to rabbits, you can't talk to various other things, you can't talk to birds, but you can talk to deer. Our urban population is much different than those that are hunted. I used to teach hunting classes many years ago, and I've known most of the uh, outdoor writers in the state of Michigan. Um, our urban deer, are extremely intelligent, but they're uh, extremely nervous 
and they're very high strung. So a lot of the accidents, a lot of the crashes, a lot of the things you might see on YouTube where they go through windows and everything occurs just because they're that high strung and they panic very easily. Now those that are very calm have learned to cross streets here. <laughs> I've walked behind them when they've crossed 10 mile, they either listen for traffic, watch for traffic or do both. But then I've also seen coyotes do that and some other wildlife. Um, we actually have a, we had a group of deer that would meet at the diving shop at 10 Mile in Middle Belt, and when traffic was really high, they would walk through the tube under the road to get to the other side. <laughs> and I don't think deer in a native habitat like enclosures that way, and, uh, but they would do that there. The, dive, uh, the owner of the dive shop would see them do that on a fairly regular basis. In regards to the age of deer, they live to be 12 or 14 if they're lucky. Uh, they do disperse, they are territorial, in many times of the year, especially now with the uh, doe and fawns, they may kind of team up with a few together, but many times they're kicking another female and her babies out of an area. The same thing goes with bucks. Um, the typical deer, untouched by people, will live in a square mile its entire life if it's a female. During the breeding season, the males may travel up to five miles looking for a date. Um, just to, go, I'll go through this very quickly for you. Um, we have tons of uh, European um, buckthorn everywhere in southern Michigan. From what I've observed over the years, that's most of their food in the summer months. Uh, my 240 feet of driveway is trimmed regularly. They eat buckthorn. So there is a readily, there is an available food source for them to feed on. Um, in our park areas where we have mature stands of trees at the back of Heritage, of course, Woodland Hills is mostly mature trees. There never was much food. They do eat the wildflowers, but there never was a, a big food base for them. So a deer is basically an edge animal. It likes a wooded area and it likes an open area. So our suburbs are a perfect place for that. Um, as, as the map showed, all the little dots of the concentrations of deer are where most of us have big lots. We have really large lots, and that's where most of the concentrations of deer are. I've noticed with the deer that I met about 15 years ago, um, when I saw the first deer tracks in a fawn track by our creek, I ran over to Judy to tell her, hot dog, we've got deer. And a few weeks later, all my day lilies that I like disappeared. And over the years, I was telling people when I was working for the Nature Center as to how to live with the wildlife. I'll give you the pros and cons of what to do when you have a problem. But to be quick though. But yeah, I let you live with it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, Judy just said, okay, smart butt, what are you gonna tell yourself now? So what I have done is I've fenced areas. I know in many sub fences aren't allowed. Um, this is just one, one thing that I've done. I fenced a garden area. Um, if deer can't see through an area, especially like a wooden fence, they won't jump it unless they're stressed. They can jump over four foot of fencing of any variety about a half of the time when I followed them to get pictures of their hoofs off the ground all at the same time, their back hooves are hitting it. I added two more feet of fencing within our property and for the last four years they've never tried that. Deer can't jump a six feet of fence from a standing stop. Panicked and fleeing for their lives, yes. They can also jump a two-lane road. Um, uh, that's an idea, you know, whether to fence or not to fence. Um, oh, by the way, the white-tailed deer is our state animal, if you'd like to know. Um, I've talked to other states over the years with live trapping of deer. They readily do not go into traps. When they have caught some, being they're such a uh, high-strung animal, many of them die during the process. So you can't really move them, and where do you move them to? Um, I've tried some deer sprays. Uh, there's one in a red container from Menards, can't remember the name. It works really well when I spray flowers. I don't want them to eat. Um, also Liquid Fence, English Garden sells it. Um, it smells so bad that works for a few days and works fairly well. Um, in Southern Michigan, always, even before deer were in Farmington Hills, twins were kind of the norm and occasionally triplets. Um, there is plenty of food for them here. I've even followed them around to see what they eat and don't eat. Mm -hmm. um, Coy you know, uh, everybody gets uh, you know, upset about having coyotes around. I mean, the news media is always covering a story on it. Um, they do take fawns. 
It's very tough for them to take adult deer, but I know of two coyotes that took a doe down. It took them 30 minutes. You can't always get your happy meal right away, but they did take it down and they ate it. So having a predator like that around is something to, you know, something to maybe just leave alone. Um, I've been around large bucks in the fall. I don't want to be on news at 11 uh, and not being able to watch it. Um, I've never felt threatened by any of them, but I'm very careful with what I do and I choose when I take photos and other things. A deer will, again, I've seen the issue with pets, will defend itself or defend its babies. Um, and a male buck during breeding season, if he's got a girlfriend or two hanging around, he very well may defend her. So again, education is a big part of this. Um, I've noticed a lot of people fencing gardens and fencing them a little higher, which has worked. Um, I've experienced the trees that have been rubbed on by the bucks, the special trees that I seem to plant uh, with the thousands of other ones that I could care less about or the ones they choose to destroy. Um, but I've learned to live with that, but then I've got enough property. Um, okay, dear Betty. Um, I, I hate to do this to you, but we have like three minutes between meetings now. Okay. And um, will you come back when we have our educational meeting? Sure. And um, maybe do a quick PowerPoint or something too? Yeah, or? I can explain to you what I've done that works for me. Okay. I, as you know, you know, many people, I mean, I like deer, you know, I've seen what they do. Um, you know, they're extremely intelligent. Um, they do do steps. Um, um, I, they've walked up our deck steps to eat some plants by our bedroom. Uh, when I want to know how they got into that area, I walk out gently. I talk in the same tone of voice. I never move my hands very quickly. And eventually they show me how they got over to that spot. They walked through the railing, twisted over to the side, went down the steps, and then they just continue to eat. Um, they look in many windows, they climb on decks, they know how to tip bird feeders. Um, when I worked at the park, you know, d the deer feeding issue is a problem. Bait, uh, a feed stores have told me that for many years people were buying more deer food, such as carrots and sugar beets and things, and they were buying bird seed. And the DNR really started this problem by allowing baiting in the state many years ago for hunting because it made additional resource as far as money goes for farmers, feed stores, grocery stores up north, because everybody was selling sugar beets and carrots and stuff. And then it worked into recreational feeding of deer, two gallons a day, they allowed that. So people all over in our communities were going to stores buying feed and feeding deer, because at the back of Heritage, we had uh, Tupperware containers with uh, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, corn, we never knew who was doing it, but people were bringing in tons of food so they could see the deer. So. As far as a cull goes, which is a kill, I really don't know how you'd handle that in large areas with huge tracts of land. Okay, Joe, maybe I you love can you. do it. I'm, I'm just gonna have I to don't have an off switch, so I don't take no offense. <laughs> <laughs> I know I've talked to you on the phone before. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> no, I'd be happy to come and I answer any you. of your questions. And if you folks would like to see what we've done at our house, yeah. I'd be happy to show you. That'd be great. Great, thank you so so much because I, I know the public would like to know some kind of remediation that they could take at this time. Um, mm -hmm. And Judy, he's all yours. <laughs> we love him though. Um, that's gonna conclude our study session um, for tonight. Stay tuned, we will be doing more. Um, obviously we need a lot of education and uh, Joe has been a good resource for us in the past, we'll continue in the future and um, we're going to just take a, a five minute break. We're going to start the regular meeting five minutes late. Um, mm -hmm. This has been a great topic and I appreciate I all of your support and attendance. And for those of you watching at home, we'll it's a little camera romantic camera. in here because uh, we, we had a, what, what do we have a surge in the circuits down? Yeah, it's, just, it's the lighting only in here. Um, it just the we, we have failed. no lighting. I'll make just, we're we're, um, put, we're putting it on the DTE tab. Okay. okay, so we're gonna take a quick break and then we will be back for our regular meeting at seven thirty-five. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.